How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be fixing the self-propelled drive system on an Aaron's commercial grade lawnmower. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, I am working on this Aaron's commercial grade self-propelled lawnmower. Apologies for the condition of my shop right now, but I'm absolutely swamped with snowblower repairs. But I got this one in and I wanted to do a video on this because uh, I believe it's gonna be a simple repair. Here is the model number of this unit right there. And my customer brought this machine into the shop because he said he was having two issues. One is that the machine drives. However, he says he has to push it to get it going and then the self-propel kind of takes over after that. And also the speed control seemingly did not work. He could not get it uh, to run faster or slower. It was basically stuck in the middle position. So today we're gonna to be addressing those issues. So coming to the rear of the lawnmower here, we have this access panel. And to remove that, you're gonna just open up this thumb screw. So we'll just take that right off. And then over here, there's a cable held in by this little plastic clip. We can just pull that right out. And then we should be able to lift this panel right off and out to expose the friction wheel drive. So this is similar to the snapper that I have. That is a really good lawnmower, also commercial grade. And we're gonna be talking about that friction wheel system and how we can make adjustments to get this self-propel lawnmower propelling properly again. Now at the top handle side of the mower, we have our aid engage handle. So this is what disconnects the coil kill switch and uh, you can start your lawnmower or shut it off by letting that go. And then here is our self-propel lever right there. So that's what engages your drive. You're gonna start up your engine and similar to my snapper commercial lawnmower, there's going to be a belt here that goes from the crankshaft of the engine to the friction plate. That's the big aluminum disc you see right down there. Now that disc is always spinning because this belt here is always under tension. Now, when you engage the drive lever up at the top, you guys are gonna notice that that cable pulls down the entire friction wheel assembly. So it basically makes a contact between the always spinning friction disc, transfers that power to the friction wheel that goes to your transmission here that then powers the wheels via this little gear system right there. So. There's gonna be a couple different things we're gonna be going over. And like I said, hopefully this should be a simple repair because as I said, the machine operates fine. It starts, it runs and it drives, but my customer has to push it to get it going. And that's what we're gonna be fixing today. Now, one of the first things you wanna look at when you're dealing with a self-propel lawnmower that is having a drive issue is gonna be the slack in the cable that is connected to the drive control lever. So basically there's quite a bit of slack in that cable right there, which means we would be able to adjust it right here. And you guys are gonna notice that is adjusted with the conduit of the cable all the way up. So if we wanted to take slack out of this cable and get it to the point where it was a little tighter, then we would wanna open up this nut here. We would be moving this entire conduit down, which then would give us a tighter cable. Now, the reason I usually start with a cable adjustment is because the friction wheel right there is made out of rubber and the rubber is going to wear away on the friction plate there over time. Now, this isn't a brand new mower. Obviously, it's been used for many years now. So we can imagine that the thickness of the rubber on that friction wheel has worn down. And when I go back to all of the play or the slack that is in that drive cable, I'm gonna show you what engaging the drive lever does to this friction wheel. And we're gonna see when exactly it starts to make contact. So I'm gonna start depressing it. And right about there is where the friction wheel makes contact with the friction plate. And you guys are gonna see there's only about a quarter inch more to go. So that means that the amount of pressure that the friction wheel is being applied to that friction plate isn't much at all and it's going to create slippage. Like I said, we're gonna come back to the drive cable and we're going to adjust it. So with an adjustable wrench, you can loosen off the top nut there and then you're going to pull back on the conduit and you guys can see already that the slack has been taken out of that cable. 
So by taking the slack out of the cable, you're going to be lowering the friction wheel closer to the friction plate. That way, when we engage the lever up top for the drive, the friction wheel will engage quicker because there will be less distance to travel. But also, once we get it to the point of engagement, we'll be able to depress the lever even further, increasing pressure on that friction wheel. Now you wanna be careful not to over adjust the tension on the drive cable. Right now you guys can see that there is a fair amount of tension on that cable. So I'll show you a trick to get it just right. So with the majority of the slack taken out of that drive cable after doing a quick adjustment, you wanna leave your drive lever on the handlebars up there disengaged and we're gonna come down to the friction wheel. And the trick that I'm gonna show you is to simply just take your finger and try to roll the friction wheel forwards or reverse. And that's going to rotate the transmission as well as the axle and the wheels. So your mower will push forwards and backwards as you rotate that friction wheel. That basically just tells you that the friction wheel is not coming in contact with the friction plate with the drive lever on the handlebars in the disengaged position. If you try to roll this friction wheel here forwards and backwards and it does not move, it means that you've made too tight of an adjustment on your drive cable. And when you go to start up your lawnmower, even with the drive lever on the handlebars disengaged, your lawnmower will start to propel itself. Now, if that happens and your cable is too tight in the disengaged position, adjustment is very simple. You're gonna do the opposite of what you did before. You're gonna back off the locking nuts and you're gonna move the conduit towards the handle a little bit to give yourself a little bit of extra slack. So now I'm going to engage the drive lever and show you the difference in pressure that we're applying to our friction wheel here. We're going to start lowering the lever and right about there is when the friction wheel comes in contact with the friction plate, but look how much extra movement we get down here on our spring. See that? So there's a lot more pressure being applied and that should, in theory, take care of our friction wheel to friction plate slippage drive issue that my customer was having. Now, as for the speed control system, it works very similar to that of a snowblower. When this is spinning in a clockwise rotation, the farther out it is, the friction wheel will travel at a greater speed because there is a larger diameter on the outside of that friction plate there, and that's going to be what we're gonna focus on now to try and get this speed selector lever working properly. So right by the large pull start handle, we have this knob that attaches itself to this linkage here, where it goes down to a pivot point here, connects to another linkage, and then that linkage goes all the way over to this connector here, which then goes down to that one, down to that one, and all the way down to our friction wheel assembly. Now, in order to get to high gear, you're supposed to be able to push down on this lever there, and then you're supposed to be able to pull this lever all the way back, and it's incredibly tight. I have my foot on the back of the mower so that I don't pull it off of my lift table, but you guys can see now the speed select lever has been pulled all the way back. Now, my customer had mentioned that uh, the speed select did work, but it was incredibly difficult to shift the mower. And that was going to be our next topic here, which is going to be all of that gunk that is built up on the shifter shaft. So just like a snowblower, there's gonna be debris and all sorts of gunk that builds up onto that shifter hex shaft. And we're gonna to wanna to clean that off and then lubricate it properly. And then we'll see if we can get this thing to shift a little bit easier. Now, in order to reach both sides of that shifter hex shaft, what we're gonna do is put the speed select lever into the fastest position. Like I said, that's gonna move the friction wheel all the way over to the right here and expose all the left side and the center of that shifter hex shaft. And then we're going to use a drill here. So I'm using just this little bit here and we're gonna go in with the drill and clean off all that gunk from that shaft. and then go ahead and roll the friction wheel or the lawnmower forward just a little bit. And just keep repeating those steps of cleaning and rolling the lawnmower forward until you get the majority of that shifter hex shaft clean. We can now go ahead and pull the speed select 
shift lever and while it's still a little difficult to pull it's much easier than it was before i've already noticed go ahead and repeat the step on the right side as well and what i have here is a tube of number two mystic low temperature grease I use this on snowblower shifter shafts and I like the way that it allows the friction wheel bearing to slide over that shifter hex shaft without this stuff getting all bound up and uh, clumped up. So this is really good stuff. It's uh, kind of buttery. It's really soft. Again, it is made for low temperatures. However, I have used it on lawnmower shifter shafts before. On my snapper, however, the shifter hex shaft is fully exposed to the elements where, at least on this Aaron's, there is a cover. So I'm hoping that a whole bunch of grass and debris doesn't stick to that but I'm gonna use some of this grease and we're going to lubricate the shifter hex shaft there. Now it doesn't have to be a whole lot. You guys can see that I got a clump on my finger there, but I'm not trying to get it to the point where there's large clumps because as the lawnmower moves, I don't want large clumps flying off onto the friction plate because obviously grease on the friction plate would cause a slippage issue. So I'm gonna wipe up all of the larger bits here, but I'll go ahead and shift it back and we'll see how much easier it is to shift. All right, so once again, in the reverse position, going to push this forward and check that out. Because we've lubricated the right side of that shifter hex shaft, it's already easier to push into high speed. So now we'll lubricate the other side. Same steps here. We're just using a little bit of that grease to lubricate that hex shaft there. Keep rolling the machine forwards and back. Try to wipe up the bigger globs as best you can. So with both sides of that hex shaft lubricated, let's see how much easier it is to shift now. Check that out. So with a little bit of time spent cleaning and some grease, we can now move the shifter shaft with one finger and shift it into high speed with the thumb there. It's very easy to move now. And even though the speed select shifter now works perfectly fine and it moves quite smoothly, you could take a little bit of silicone lubricant or basically any kind of lubricant because there are going to be multiple pivot points that you could lubricate to keep this system working perfectly. Now, don't worry if you get a little bit of grease or silicone lubricant spray onto the friction plate. We're gonna be cleaning that next. That's gonna be the last step we're going to do because the friction plate is aluminum and a lot of times the rubber from the friction wheel gets basically packed onto that aluminum friction plate. So we can use the same technique with the wire wheel attachment to our drill and spin the drill and clean the friction plate. However, you're gonna notice that it's only cleaning one area. So how do we get that friction plate to turn? Well, that's where another person or one of these quick clamps are going to come in handy because you're gonna to want to engage your blade engagement lever there. Now, having the blade engagement lever on the handlebars engaged will allow you to grab a hold of the pull cord and pull the engine over and rotate the crankshaft, thus turning the friction plate. Now, you can do that while you're spinning your drill to clean that entire friction plate there. And I've gone ahead and removed the spark plug just so it makes it easier for me to pull that engine over. And I also don't have to worry about it trying to start while I'm cleaning it. So I went ahead and cleaned the entire friction plate quite easily. You guys can see it shining in the light now. However, we want to make sure that the friction plate down there is free from any of the lubricants that we used to lubricate this drive system. So what I'm gonna do is use some of my refinishers select silicone wax and grease remover on a shop towel here, and we're gonna wipe that friction plate clean. Now it might prove difficult to wipe the entire friction plate, so I'm going to repeat the same process of pulling on the pull cord and holding the rag in a stationary position so that the friction plate rotates and that way I get full coverage with my silicone and grease remover. And then once you have that friction plate cleaned off, go ahead and wipe down the friction wheel as well, just to make sure that you get all of the oil and grease off of the rubber friction wheel. Now my customer did want a full service on this spark plug, oil change, air filter, as well as sharpen and balance the blade if we could. I didn't wanna show any of that in today's video. Basically, I just wanted to focus on fixing that drive issue. So I'm gonna lower this off of the lift, take this unit outside. I'm gonna fire it up, let it warm up, and see if we got this drive issue solved.
So now that I know that the lawnmower self propels itself, once the lever is engaged, we don't need to push it forward to help it get going like my customer said before. I just went ahead and tightened up the top lock nut there. You may have seen it loose in the video and that's just because I wanted to be able to adjust it as I saw fit if I needed to while I was running the lawnmower outside there. Well, that's gonna be it for today's repair. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel up for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.